The Two Choices After many months of stewing about it as a young man, I finally asked my college president, grandfather, who had a divinity degree and whom I considered an Irish Christian mystic of sorts, why is there evil in the world? He sat at his desk in his study with a hand on his chin, pausing for a few moments, and then said, There is good even in evil, if for no other reason than the stopping of it. The answer wasn't a direct one to my question, so I persisted. But why have evil only to get rid of it? I felt myself going into debate mode. There are two choices in this universe, he said. You can choose the love and light that says, we are all one, or you can choose the one that says, I do whatever I want to do without regard to anyone else. I nodded and he smiled and began talking about his garden. These answers got me thinking and I began to wonder how oneness was love and light and how individualism led to separation and darkness. Many years later, during a Navajo sweat lodge ceremony in New Mexico, I ended up back on this train of thought and asked one of the elders why someone would choose evil, darkness, and separation over light, love, and oneness. He replied, The Creator split the world into dark and light as a demonstration of love. Those choosing the dark inevitably change back to the light and in the process show us what compassion is. The lodge was silent as a loving presence filled the space. Now, in these tumultuous times of the Great Awakening, it is becoming clear to humanity who has chosen darkness over light, and the compassionate act of justice has become an overarching theme in societies around the world. As the previously slumbering begin to blink open their eyes to the tyranny of darkness that has exhausted the world over a millennia, they go through the various stages of loss, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance in the compassionate arms of their loved ones. And as the full impact of what the controllers have destroyed to maintain power is fully accepted, the awakened begin to demand justice, connect with other awakened ones, and gather the resources in the name of it. Those still clinging desperately to the lies and deceit that got them their power have begun to panic. The very real possibility that they can lose all their ill-gotten gains has them swirling in a whirlpool of their own stages of loss, angrily denying, bargaining in dark depressions, unwilling to accept the inevitable transformation into the light that towers over their futures. The cosmic intelligence of creation is being revealed in all its dramatic glory. What has been hidden from the light is obvious in the contrast of its darkness. Accusations of wrongdoing only point back to the accuser. Dark conspiracies are glaringly exposed and further serve to awaken the sleeping slaves. The Creator does not create dark souls. All souls are born into the light, but not all choose the light. Why? The light of oneness is a structure of an intent to love, as everything is in its rightful place, the harmonious whole, with everyone singing their part in the heavenly choir. Outside these grand creations, a soul may choose to go its own way to experience universes of power, dominion, and individual glorifications, rejecting the structures of light that is love, harmony, and oneness. Over eons of time, this supposed freedom from the structure of oneness leads to a loveless tyranny of control, and the dark souls find themselves trapped in an inevitable matrix of lies, deceit, rage, and destruction. What fun is that? It can be clearly seen that the function of the darkness is to expand the light and love of oneness. All those souls choosing to enter the abyss can always choose to leave it. And this becomes a call to action for the awakened, to shine their light everywhere there is even a hint of darkness. Start within yourself to reveal the embedded lives of self-destruction, 
self-limitation, and mortal fears. As a result, the love of self expands, and that light of oneness can exercise the darkness from family, friends, community, and ultimately nations and the world. Justice can then prevail. God wins. You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. Brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy Rx. www.pureenergyrx.com.